Now the purpose of this video is to explain the difference between independent and dependent variables. I know we talked about this a little bit when we were going through the different steps of the scientific method. We said that there's independent and dependent variables involved in developing a hypothesis. So most of the time, that's when you're going to see this, is when you're talking about the hypothesis step of establishing your own experiment or maybe interpreting the experiment of somebody else. The easiest way to go about breaking these down is to talk about what these two words mean. We'll talk about the difference between the word independent and dependent first. If you understand the basic definition of the words, it makes it a lot easier to go through and understand how it affects what we're talking about when it comes to different kinds of variables. So as many of you probably already know, if somebody or something is independent, it's not influenced by others. So that's our, our key word here. So it talks about other things at the end, like thinking or acting for oneself. That would be like if a person is independent. We're going to be uh, talking more about the ideas of setting up variables in an experiment, and if the variables are influenced or controlled by others, like by other factors in the experiment. That's the important point of this one for us. So that's what we're taking out of our definition there for that one. As far as dependent goes, it's the opposite of that. So it's now relying on someone or something else. So in our experiments, it'll be something else is influencing the dependent variable. Uh, to give you a simple example of a hypothesis that you might have to go through and analyze the independent and dependent variables out of, we'll take a look at a simple experiment that I could do with all of you in class tomorrow if we decided to. So we would maybe come up with a hypothesis that says, if students, oh, I got the wrong size font here. We've got, if students eat breakfast, then they will earn better grades. So, if we were going through and we're analyzing this one, the first part would be to take everybody in class and divide them up into two groups. You're either in the group that eats breakfast before you come to school, or you don't eat breakfast. Now, those two things, those are our independent variables, because that's not changing. You're not going to move from one group to the next. You either ate breakfast before you came to school that day, or most days, or you, uh, you didn't eat breakfast. The dependent variable will then be the grades. So let's say you take a quiz every Wednesday. The way we would set this up is that Wednesday I would poll everybody in class. Hey, did you eat breakfast this morning or didn't you? That's independent. That's not going to change. You either ate breakfast or you didn't. Once we're done with that, I would then do the dependent part of the experiment. You'd all take your quiz on Wednesday and I would take a look at your grades. The grades are going to change, right? Some people that ate breakfast will probably get good grades. Other people that didn't eat breakfast might get poor grades. So like the, the results are going to differ, and we might find that breakfast is a good indicator of how good your grades are going to be. We might also find that eating breakfast is not a good indicator for whether or not students are going to earn a good grade on their Wednesday quiz. But either way, this is an experiment we could run, and whether or not the students eat breakfast, that's still the independent variable, because that doesn't change. You know, you show up, you either have eaten breakfast or you didn't. The thing that's going to change, though, is the grade that you'll earn at the end. So that's going to vary between people. Uh, the next thing to look at is just a way of simply breaking this down to analyze it out of a hypothesis. So if we're thinking about the independent variables, the independent variables typically make up the if statement when it comes to writing a hypothesis. So if you're good at figuring out what the independent and dependent variables are in what you're setting up for an experiment, this is an easy way to write your hypothesis correctly every time because the independent variable will always make up that if part in the beginning. The next one then, as you could probably predict, the dependent variable makes up the then statement. Because the then part is whatever's changing. You know, if students eat breakfast, then they will get better grades on their Wednesday quiz. You know, that was our prediction. That was our hypothesis. Now, what we'll find when we go through and actually do this experiment in class is we'll see if that's true or not. We'll see if whether or not you eat breakfast is a good predictor 
of whether or not you'll earn good grades. So keep in mind, a hypothesis doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be true. I'm not telling you that 100% of the time, students that eat breakfast will get better grades on their quiz. I'm just saying that's a hypothesis we could test in class. So once we test it, we could see if the data supports that hypothesis, or maybe it doesn't support that hypothesis. So hopefully this clears up a few things about the differences between independent and dependent variables. Thanks for watching.